All right, so we're on to part three now of REDCap Data Management, Security, and Randomization. This is Steve here. And I'll start off by saying if you haven't watched part one or two of this course, you might want to go back and review that uh, just so you know how we got here. And also that we're using REDCap version 8.5.0. So if you're using a different version of REDCap, things might look slightly different, but generally the same principle should apply here. So in this section, we're going to be talking about user rights. So let's have a look at that. Um, and I'll start off by saying I think user rights is often neglected, but from a data security perspective, it's probably the most important module within REDCap. And the reason I think that it's uh, neglected sometimes is that uh, a lot of times when I'm added to somebody's project, either to review their uh, design or maybe consult or, or whatever, um, I'll check out their user rights page and I'll find that all of their users are kind of added randomly with a random uh, array of user rights here. And that's definitely not the best way to work. Um, REDCap gives us some really nice tools here to be able to control user access. And uh, just like I said, in terms of data security, we want to make sure that we're just limiting our users kind of to the minimum rights that they need to be able to do their job. Um, and I'll explain that further as we go along. Uh, so first of all, uh, we have a few options here, but the idea is that when we're setting up a project, we want to create specific user roles for everybody within our project. So for example, uh, a lot of these roles would be pretty self-evident, so you'll have your data entry people, uh, you might have a data auditor or um, a PI. Um, so first of all, before you do anything, you kind of just want to sit down and think about what types of users are going to be interacting with this project. Uh, in this case, we're just going to do data entry person because I think that's going to be fairly applicable to everybody. Uh, so let's create that role. Oops. Yeah. So firstly, we need to actually give it a role name. So let's just call it data entry. Oh, God. All right. So we'll say create role. And REDCap kind of breaks things down into two, two sections. So the basic rights and then data entry rights. And in the basic rights, they're kind of ranked sort of loosely in order of uh, highest level of, pri or level of privileges. So we start off here with the highest level privileges. So first of all, we have project design and setup. And this is what lets you actually build the forms. So if you think about it for data entry people, um, they don't need to be designing forms or setting everything up. So we can make sure that that's unchecked. And it's important to do this because uh, I found, at least early on when I was using REDCap, if you leave this unchecked, uh, people will be tempted, I think, sometimes to make little tweaks to the project. Um, and that's definitely not a good way to work because if the person doesn't know what they're doing, they could uh, compromise the integrity of your data. So by disabling this right, we kind of remove that temptation altogether. Uh, the next one is user rights. Uh, so this, I'd say, is probably the most important right in, in all of them here, because as soon as you give somebody access to user rights, they can just open this up and change everything. So basically, if you're giving somebody rights to user rights, you're giving them full rights to the project. So essentially, I don't give anybody user rights except for myself and probably the project PI. Uh, the PI because, you know, if the, me, the project designer, ever, ever leaves or is removed from the project, we want the PI to be able to add new people. But our data entry people, of course, have no reason to be adding or removing people from the project, so we'll leave that unchecked. Data access groups is a similar idea, um, and we'll talk about this briefly later, but um, this will allow you to assign users to different data access groups, which again, our data entry people are not going to need to do. Uh, so next up is our data export privileges. And so as I mentioned in the previous video, the way that we work in the Slate Center is that we only have one person, uh, in this case me, who's in charge of doing data exports or uh, writing queries for, for data requests. So generally, I would set most users to no access. Of course, again, I would give the project PI full data access because it's their study. Um, and in accordance with that, I would also probably just remove uh, uh, re add edit reports and stats and charts because if they don't have access to the data, they don't really need access to these things. Uh, so the next set here is these are just kind of random modules within REDCap. And the kind of rule of thumb I use here is that if it's not being used, then there's really no reason to have it enabled. So for example, the calendar, Unfortunately, the calendar has great potential, and I've tried to use it a few times, but it's just lacking in a few certain features that kind of ruin the whole thing. So I've kind of just given up on it, sadly. 
Uh, and as a result, I usually just leave it unchecked for everybody. Um, same with these, like we don't need our data entry, entry people to be importing data uh, or comparing data. Logging is really more of an auditing function, so if you have a data auditor, you might want to enable that. Uh, file repository, again, it's kind of project specific. Uh, if you're using it to upload files, like a, I don't know if you're uploading protocols or, or you know, lab forms or something, you might want to enable it, but uh, we won't be doing that today. Data quality, we're going to come back to in another video. API, again, if you know that you need it, you can enable it, but generally for most projects, you're probably not going to be using it. Redcap Mobile, we're not using this project. Uh, what I really want to get to is uh, these ones down here. So for our data entry people, obviously we want them to be able to create records. Uh, so we're going to check that off. For rename records, I usually enable this one because I find uh, what often happens, or really the only time they'll need to use this is if they put in a typo when uh, when they're creating their record ID. So uh, by enabling this, it just allows the data entry person to quickly fix it. Um, delete records, this one I'm a little more wary of, uh, and it really kind of just depends on how much control you want to have as potentially, uh, I'm speaking as a data manager here, how much control you want to have over the project. So um, if you enable it, you'll let your users be able to delete records. And you know most of the time it's going to be because they create a record by accident and they want to get rid of it. But from a data management and security perspective, uh, I personally like to maintain control over this. So if a record does need to be deleted, uh, it kind of goes through that one check of passing through me to to make sure that we're not actually losing important data. Um, so this is kind of up to you and how much you want to be able to control uh, the data in your project. Uh, these next couple of settings we will actually come back to in a later video, but for now I'm just going to leave them disabled. Okay, so on the right hand side we have our data entry rights, and to be honest I kind of, my brain didn't even process that this section existed until maybe like a year of using REDCap, but on this side we can uh, control what specific forms our users have access to. So in this case, in this simple example, of, uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to want our data entry people to be able to access all of these forms. But where this becomes kind of more useful is if you're uh, doing perhaps like a randomized control trial where some of your users are going to be blinded and some of your users will be unblinded. Uh, in that case, let's say you had a form that had some unblinding information you might want to make sure that your blinded people have no access to that form because then there won't be any risk of them stumbling across uh, the unblinded information. Um, alternatively, another example might be, uh, so for example, in, in a PI role, I'll often just set the PI to read only because I don't expect them to be entering or changing data at all. But this will let them go into the forms and actually see the data. But for now, I'm just going to keep you and edit uh, for all forms because we're doing a data entry person. So once that's created, uh, we'll say create role, and we'll see it pop up here. And so the idea would be kind of in your workflow. Um, when you're creating a new project, first of all, you design all of your forms and uh, get your data entry uh, workflow set up properly. Um, but before you add any users to your project, you'll want to create all of the roles that uh, you'll think you'll need. So like I mentioned earlier, data entry is very common. Um, maybe you might want to set up a data auditor for somebody who's going to be doing your data quality checks um, and not maybe necessarily entering data. A uh, PI role to kind of give um, full access to the project uh, just because it's technically their research project. Um, and then, you know, maybe you might want to set up a project manager or project coordinator that has slightly elevated rights. Um, really, it kind of is just up to you. The important thing is that you take some time to put some thought into it. And, uh, and come up with some roles based on what you think your users are going to need. But once your roles are set up, you can start adding people to the project. So in that case, I'm just going to add myself uh, to the role of data entry. And so then uh, your user will get put in right into this role uh, right away with these rights. And then that's really all you need to do. Um, but the one thing I will point out is that there's another handy little feature here uh, where you can set an expiration for your users. And so you might want to use this in the case of, let's say, a summer student or a co-op student or, I don't know, maybe a, a temporary employee or basically somebody where you know they have a set expiration date. Um, and so you might want to do this because this, well, this kind of brings us to maybe a more important point to consider here. 
So um, in RedCap, uh, when you log in, you'll notice or you'll know that your user credentials or your username and password are different than the credentials that you use to log in at CAMH, like into Windows, for example. Um, and so what this means is that when somebody leaves CAMH, uh, obviously their CAMH ID is going to be um, taken offline and they won't be able to log in. However, their REDCap ID will still be very much active. So uh, in the example where you have a co-op student who, who leaves at the end of summer, you want to make sure that after they leave CAMH, they don't have access to REDCap anymore or access to the data. And so we can set the expiration for that. Um, so to do that, first of all, we actually need to remove the person from the role. Uh, that's just kind of a quirk of how this works. So we can click the name and say remove from role. And we're going to get a little pop-up here that says the rights are retained, which is fine. And we can click the name, say edit user privileges. And then you'll see up here there's an expiration date. So we can just put that in for yesterday to see how it works. And now you'll see that the expiration date pops up here. And we can actually put this user back into the data entry rule now. And uh, the reason why you want to do this, so first of all, this is a, a good way to work because now that when this person tries to log in and access the project, they'll just, they'll be able to log into RedCap, but they'll get a, a warning flag that says they no longer are able to access the project. But the other useful um, reason for this is because it will give us a record of everybody who's ever had access to the project. So you, while you could technically just remove this person entirely, um, expiring them will show that they were like at one point part of this project. So it's kind of good for tracking purposes. Um, yeah, so that, that pretty much does it for um, setting the expiration date. The other thing that I want to show, which kind of goes along with expiration and just kind of user management in general, is the user access dashboard. So it's kind of conspicuous and the only way to get to it is if you go to my projects and you'll see kind of there's a link up here that's very easy to ignore. But if you click this link, it's going to give you a list of all of your, in this case, all of my data management projects, but all of the projects that you're on and all of your users. And um, yeah, it will say their expiration. And it will also show you even uh, the last time that they accessed the project. And so in terms of best practices, it's good to review this user access dashboard maybe once a month. Um, because you want to make sure that all of the users on your projects are actually still working on those projects. And to be honest, I actually kind of embedded this sometimes where I'll check my user access dashboard and I'll look at my projects and I'll realize that sometimes we have users on there that maybe left CAMH um, or, or maybe are not on the project anymore. And that's definitely not ideal because there is, you know, in the worst case scenario, let's say, um, let's say somebody leaves CAMH under not the best of circumstances. Uh, you don't want them to kind of go home and go into your RedCap project and potentially mess around with things. So the first kind of like barrier to that is if you're putting them in a very restricted role. So as you remember in our data entry role, we had very limited rights there. So there was very limited damage that they could do there. But if they had uh, higher level user rights, um, you know, they could potentially mess things up. So we want to make sure that when somebody leaves a project, we kind of remove them or expire them uh, as soon as possible. And to do that, all you need to do is just set expire uh, or delete. So like I said, the distinction there is that the expiry will keep them inside the project, just they won't be able to access it, uh, which I think is the better way to work. But you can also just remove them entirely. Um, functionally, it will have kind of the same result for the end user themselves, but it's kind of more for us uh, how we want to track things. So you can do that, or obviously you can just go through your individual projects and uh, go into your user rights and review them man manually every month or so. And it's kind of a hard thing rem to remember to do. Um, so you could set yourself a reminder in your calendar, but uh, because like I said, sometimes I'll, I'll go into my user rights and be like, oh, this person hasn't worked here for a week or six weeks or however long. And uh, yeah, you just kind of want to stay on top of that. At the very least, uh, if you do forget we do have the system set up that if the user hasn't logged in within six months, they do get automatic or their account is automatically suspended. Um, but again, six months is still uh, a fairly long amount of time that we wouldn't want users um, to have access to a project when they shouldn't. Okay, so 
that does it for user rights, basically. The only other thing that I'll point out uh, along the same lines of user rights is the data access groups. And I'm not going to get too deep into it, but I just want to point out that the idea here is um, if you want to create separate sets of data for your users, um, this is where you do it. And kind of the main case for that is if you're doing a multi-site study. So let's say you're doing a study with CAMH and sick kids and, I don't know, save mics, let's say. But you want to set it up so that CAMH people can only see CAMH data and sick kids people can only see sick kids data and, and so on. Uh, you would do that here. So all you need to do is create a group called CAMH. And then very much like the user rights, you can just select your users and assign them to those groups. And so now whenever Steve Holly here enters data, um, it's going to be put into this CAMH data access group and only people in this group will be able to see it. Uh, an important point to note is that for me, using Workshop 11 here, because I'm not in any group, I'll still be able to see all of the data. So as a data manager, you'll probably want to keep yourself outside of the groups. But your data entry people, um, if, if your project requires it, you'll want to make sure that they're in those data access groups. Okay, so I think that does it for user rights. Uh, in the next section, we're going to be talking about just some additional customization features that are in RedCap. Uh, and I guess I will see you then.